all of the lecturers are very engaging and energetic and you can tell they're very passionate about what they're uh, lecturing on so it's quite enjoyable to listen to them. I think that they've just had such an abundance of experience and information to provide. I would actually really like to hear more from them. You went and cracked an okay light pace, LFT's fine. You even think he's got peritoneal signs, maybe. There's a lot of these skills and things that you learn from the lectures and hands-on workshops um, can be very helpful. A lot of the um, out of the box thinking of what you can utilize and, and the resources that you have. And also, you know, if you're going on expeditions or even just hiking with family members, being able to um, use some of the things that you're learning here to help if, if needed, um, I think would be really beneficial. So I definitely recommend the conference. I think what I enjoyed the most so far was the workshop where we did some hands-on kind of wilderness and urban survival techniques, learning how to navigate and make shelters and we have a rope out of grass, it was great. Um, being able to do out things outside of the conference because they're just half days, that's you know a lot of fun. Going on hikes and doing some of the water activities and kayaking and whatnot um, has also been very fun for me to do. My family happened to come with us on this trip, so spending a lot of time with them has been really enjoyable. AWEB is Advanced Wilderness and Expedition Provider, and it was born out of this need to provide at these conferences on wilderness medicine, focused approach to patients in the field. You can learn lots about lightning at these conferences and altitude and hypothermia and animal bites, but AWEB teaches folks how to approach usually an injured patient in the field. The way that we try to teach AWEB is that it will appeal to all levels. We assume everybody in there already understands the basics of emergency medicine and how to approach patients. So we jump right into a field-oriented approach. How do you deal with patients following wilderness medicine emergencies? What do you do? There's the patient. They're on the bank of the river. They're bleeding and or unconscious. You show up. How do you organize the rescue? What do you do? How do you try to fix them? And how do you get them out of there? I'm Howard Donner, I'm a physician and have spent my entire career working in and around wilderness medicine, including search and rescue, research, and expedition medicine, and now here I am teaching medicine at this national conference, which is something I really enjoy doing. So my name is Dora Kibbe, I'm an instructor of wilderness survival and I also teach urban survival for the kids, teens and the adults courses. So the most important thing that we cover in, in our course today is how to prepare for any sort of a trip or a survival experience. We like to focus on the preparation as well as divide it out into the practical lessons that we learn while we're outside. So we first started off trying to make wilderness forts. Um, then we moved on to creating poncho survival, survival forts essentially. Um, and then we moved on to signaling for help, direction finding, uh, fire starting. We also worked with maps and compasses just a little bit to understand basic direction finding, signaling, and looking for water or food. I thought it was really interesting. Um, living in a place with lots of forests and potentially dangerous situations, it's really helpful to know what to do and when to do it. Taking these courses while coming to the conference, you know, number one, you get a chance to meet other people your age that are here for the same experience you are. Even if you don't love the outdoors, we'd really encourage you to come to learn a little bit about, about them with us. We really love sharing our passion with you and we'd love to get a chance to meet you.